This is Spunky. And Snarky. And we say, welcome Welcome to to the the show. show. welcome this is our labor day weekend show summer's gonna be officially over and this summer particularly sucked because you couldn't do shit because of covid (laughs) my favorite summer thing is going to concerts but that didn't happen this year (laughs) nope so we're gonna talk about another thing we hate doing during summer which is family (laughs) get-togethers And we're going to be looking at this made-for-TV movie that we really liked when we were younger called Family Reunion, A Relative Nightmare. Because it reminds us of our family reunions that are not relatively, but quite accurately nightmares. (laughs) (laughs) So let's dive on in to the episode. Family Reunion, The Relative Nightmare is a 1995 made-for-TV movie starring Melissa Joan Hart, Jason Marsden, and a bunch of classic TV stars. It originally aired on April 1st, 1995 on the ABC network. All right, so the movie opens up with Billy Dooley, the main character who's sleeping in his family's car. And he has this dream of himself on the beach and all his relatives are there. And everyone kind of starts nagging him like his grandfather like digs into him. His grandma tries to like smother him. His cousins come all up to him. All this stuff happens and then he sees his Aunt Margaret talking about how Mark Jr., his cousin, really wants to see him. And then all of a sudden, out of the water, Mark Jr. comes and he's like a zombie and then everyone is a zombie and they're attacking him and it's pretty funny. And he like wakes up and screams and his parents are like, okay, you got our attention, what do you want? And he's like, oh, nothing. But basically he's been having these nightmares about going to this family reunion because he fucking hates going. Apparently you find out that the whole family hates going because the rest of their family is very competitive and there's a lot of stress involved. But it's their great-grandma, Mimov's 100th birthday, and so they kind of have to go and show face. They're pulling up to the place, and they see his Aunt Margaret and Mark Sr. And, of course, his dad kind of gets into a little competition with them. Mark Sr. is like, I'll race you to the front of the hotel. And he's like, okay, because he's in a car. But then Mark Sr. like bikes across the lawn and, of course, wins and rubs it in. So there's like the main family, Billy's dad, Kevin. Uh, He's got a sister, Connie, and then his mom, Grace. And then there's the McKenna's, Kevin's sister, Margaret, and Mark Sr. and Mark Jr. So the McKenna's are kind of douchebags. Yeah, they're very (laughs) sporty and kind of yuppie-ish. And just like snooty. And then there's all these other people that we come to meet later. So the family walk into the resort, which is run by the Jameson family. And they all look alike. Played by the actor who played Squiggy and Laverne and Shirley. He plays almost every member of the Jameson family, female and male. Except for one, but we'll meet that one later. We meet Aunt Kate, played by Joanne Worley from Laughing. There's a lot of classic TV stars in this, as I said before. And we meet all their dorky cousins. They want Billy's attention super bad. Yeah, they've got the one kid who, like, wants to show him his chewed up gum. And then you got the one, like, scientist nerdy kid. Who, like, wants him to help dissect frogs and stuff. And then there's a kid who doesn't talk, Greg. And then there's... There's that one little girl who always wants piggyback rides. Mm Mm-hmm. But then there's Amber. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay, so Amber, who's Billy's second cousin, she's got a major crush on him and is totally creepy about it. She's like, just so you know, it's okay for second cousins to propagate. And I'm just like... Mm. And she is super horny for him. She really wants to bone Billy. Yeah. Because <laughs> she's, she's like 14. She's trying to be down for it. Yeah. And it's awful. 
And I just got to take a minute, too, to mention that, like, this is so super 90s and, like, Connie and some of the other characters later that are teenagers have, like, the brown lipstick. I was thinking the same thing. (laughs) Which was, like, so 90s, like, wet and wild, the brown lipstick. (laughs) I had that. I had the lip liner. But anyway, moving along. The family then meet up with the dad's parents. The dad and the grandpa haven't spoken to each other in years. And they ask where the guest of honor, Mima, is. And the grandma, Dottie, says that she's asleep. But then Billy looks over and sees Mima skateboarding by the pool, doing flips and stuff. She jumps over a lawn chair and, like, airs it. <laughs> does like a board grab over the lawn yeah, chair. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. It, it's like so super cheesy because it's like you can tell like it's a stunt double in the grandma outfit, but it made me laugh so. Yeah. <laughs> Billy says, are you sure she's asleep? And then the grandma's like, well, you never can tell with her, but they locked her in her room. But then she looks for the key and she can't find it. The duallys then go get settled up in the room and they find their dually reunion itinerary, which includes multiple sports competitions for the dually family Olympics. Billy goes onto the patio to get some air when he sees a blonde girl running through the trees and he's smitten immediately. So later that night, they're having the Dooley reception where Aunt Kate gets up and goes over the family history, which turns out that the family came to America on a prisoner ship and they were like the first Dooley to steal like a horse or something. (laughs) So their family history of being crooks, but then they turn to being like lawyers (laughs) eventually. So that was kind of interesting. But in the middle, Kate's like, my only regret is that I couldn't have children. And the daughter, Connie, makes fun of her because she does this speech every year. <laughs> but they're like, we're here to celebrate Mima. And Mima's like there, like chilling with her Walkman and she not even paying not attention. She's not here for this birthday party. and like everyone gets up and claps for her and she has to turn her walkman off and she's like just sit the fuck down she's <laughs> like first off i'm only 98 so you got it wrong like don't rush me <laughs> and then she's like who do i have to kill to get an iced tea in here and then she's like okay thank you and sits down <laughs> Mima gave me so much life watching this yeah she's really funny throughout the whole thing So Mark Sr. gets up to talk about the family Olympics that everyone is dreading. And um, Billy happens to turn and sees the blonde girl again. But this time she's like going along with a buffet line and stuffing food in her backpack, like looking all suspicious and shit. And he wants to go talk to her, but his mom is like, you ain't going nowhere. Mark Sr. is like, oh, there's one Dooley family that didn't participate this year. And of course, they're talking about Billy's family. Last year, his family was competing at the volleyball tournament Billy and his dad went for the ball and they collided and basically knocked each other out so it's become like a big joke of the family and Mark Sr. of course won't let it go and is jabbing at him that they can have a KO event and whoever KOs first wins then maybe they'll win something and the whole family's laughing at them yeah and and he's an asshole so Billy just finally loses it and he stands up and he's like you know what we're in and his dad gets up and is like yeah and we're gonna kick your ass so they have this moment of adrenaline and they're like what the fuck do we get into the next day we see billy and his sister connie sitting at the dreaded kids table with his weird cousins and amber tries to hit on billy again saying they can do some adult things again creepy super she's creepy like 14 i mean billy's not that much older but still yeah she's like coming on way too strong billy jumps up and makes his escape and he sees the mystery girl again and he decides to follow her. We see two other girls pull up in a blue Mustang. One says, there she is to the other girl, and they decide to wait for the mysterious girl to come out of the building that she ran into. Billy then bumps into the two girls as he's following the mystery girl's trail. He then enters the building and then sneaks into the woman's locker room. We see the mystery girl putting her hair up in the mirror and hiding it under a baseball cap, and she says, goodbye, Samantha Avondale. Billy finally meets up with Samantha and tells her that he was looking for her. She says, who sent you? Like, suspicious. And he says, a cool line would be destiny. She says an even cooler line would be get lost as she walks off. (laughs) 
Billy goes after her and she tells him to stop following her. He says he just wants to talk and starts telling her about the reunion. I'm like, why isn't she more freaked out that there was a guy in the girls' locker room of the spa just saying? Yeah, she didn't seem to care too much about that. She cuts him off and then she says she has enough of her own problems to worry about. The two girls in the car see them together and the one girl says to the other to stop checking out the boys. The other girl says that one of the boys looks familiar. Samantha then tells Billy that she bets he's one of those guys that can't take a hint. Billy says yes, then offers to help Samantha with her backpack as he grabs onto it. Samantha says no if anyone needs help it's you as she takes off her hat and starts hitting billy with it the two girls in the car realize that it's samantha and start driving towards her samantha sees them too and makes a run for it billy then realizes what's going on and grabs a bike and tells samantha to hop on they ride their bike into the hotel and the chase is on billy and samantha bike down a set of stairs and into the elevator Billy questions Samantha and asks her why those girls are after her. She says there's no time to explain and that she's out of there. She thanks Billy and they introduce themselves. Billy sees the girls again coming up the stairs about to grab Sam when he pulls her on his bike again. This part's a little fake because like they totally could have turned that bike up. But anyway, there's the 10K bike tournament going on. And they're like, where's Billy? Because he's supposed to be competing. And Aunt Margaret and everyone else is there. And Mima's there watching. And she's all like sassy to Aunt Margaret. She's like, you know, you keep me locked up in a room all year. And then for like one week, you pull me out and parade me around. Like hoping I'll burn up in the heat and die. And you'll get the inheritance. And it was like, oh, damn. (laughs) Margaret just kind of brushes her off like old people old people say the darndest things but Mima like pulls out a pistol and just starts waving it around and she's like I call him as I see him but we find out it's a pistol for the race but still eventually they start the race and they're like "Uh, I guess we gotta go without Billy but then of course Billy shows up on his bicycle with Sam as the hood ornament and they're all like, who's this? And he's like, it's Cousin Bernice from California. That no one's seen in a long time. So they go throughout the bike race. I guess she's hanging on for dear life. I don't know why she just doesn't jump off at some point now that she's in the race, but whatever. So the Dooleys eventually cross the finish line, but the mechanics are already done. And Billy's dad is like dying because they haven't trained for the race because they weren't planning on doing any of this Olympic bullshit this year. And then Mark Sr. and Margaret are talking and they were like, you're supposed to let them win. And he's like, well, you know, if I let them win on the first round, it'll be too obvious. So they're clearly like hatching something, but we don't know what. And the plot thickens. We transition to later that day where Billy and his sister Connie are playing tennis against Mark Jr. and creepy cousin Amber. Mima comments, hell of a birthday, watching the stinking ball go back and forth. What mental midget thought I would like this? As she turns to the grandpa. <laughs> he then turns to the grandma Dottie and says, that mouth of hers is the reason why his dad died a young man. Mima says, I heard that, Joe. And then the grandpa turns back to the grandma and says, she hears everything. Mima says, who says your senses are supposed to fade? Mine are getting better. Back to the tennis game. Billy's sister Connie slips her trying to return a serve and hurts her ankle. She's smitten when a tennis pro comes to check on her and she finds out he's Daryl Jameson, but he doesn't look like the other Jamesons. And she's like, oh my God, you're not a freak. (laughs) And then they get smitten with each other. Yeah, he's like, oh, the family thinks I'm a freak of nature because he's like handsome. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Mark Jr. makes a snide remark like, oh, looks like you lost your partner. So that's another loss loser. But then Sam, pretending to be Bernice, steps up and says that she'll take Connie's place. Mark Jr. agrees to it, but Amber is none too pleased that she is with her man. Ew. Sam is really good at tennis and Billy is super impressed and they win the match. He tells Sam, welcome to the family. Mark Sr. is mad because they look bad, but Margaret calms him down. Now we move on to this volleyball game, which is the last event of the Dooley Family Olympics and whoever wins takes all. So the McKenna family is up to something. Mark approaches Billy's dad, Kevin, and is like, why don't we make a little wager on the game? And he's like, how much we talking? And he's like, no, 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 not money. We're family. We don't bet with money. 
And no, no. We win. We'll have Mima move in with you. And he's like, you want to bet on grandma? But eventually he gives in. Of course, Mima overhears this. She's like, they're betting on me. And she's kind of upset about it. Because she's like, no one wants me and I don't want them. So they shake on the bet and they play the game. And so they're doing all right. It's kind of close and it's the McKenna serve. It's their match point. So Mark Jr. serves and it goes right to Billy. And so, of course, Billy like receives it and spikes it and it's all glorious. And then you realize that he's just daydreaming and it comes to him and he goes to spike it and it falls on the floor. He totally whiffs it and misses. So the McKenna's win and Billy's dad is like, how did you miss that? Like it was right towards you. The dad yells at him and gives him grief. And then Billy's pissed off because his dad yelled at him. The mom tries to smooth things over, but she doesn't do a very good job of it. Yeah, and then Kevin has to tell the wife that Mima's going to move in with them. And she's like, you know what? This is a good thing because they probably didn't take good care of her anyway. Yeah, so mom's really nice about the whole thing. (laughs) Yeah, but she's also like, you better patch things up with Billy because you were a douche. So we come back from commercial and we see Billy walking along the beach, sad. And then you see Sam run up and join him. And this is where we get a little of her backstory. She says she knows it doesn't help, but she knows how he feels. And then she tells a story about how she used to be a cheerleader and during her routine her skirt fell off and her dad was in the stands freaked out but he never said anything or got mad at her and then when her dad dies she was the one who was mad because they never like talked about things that they needed to talk about sam and billy walk by the playground where billy gets bombarded with questions from the weird cousins then the two girls try to grab sam we find out that they're sam's stepsisters we then see the little cousin who doesn't talk yell out hey look billy's in trouble the weird cousins go after the stepsisters and like start like beating the crap out of them (laughs) billy thanks greg the kid who couldn't talk before and he and sam make their escape billy asks sam why the stepsisters are after her she says that after her father died her stepmother pulled a whole cinderella thing on her so she ran away Billy says he ran away once when he was five, but he came back. He, like, got to the corner and realized that he wasn't allowed to cross the street by himself, so he went back. (laughs) Sam says if she had his family, she wouldn't run away either. Billy says that if he did run away, today would be the day to do it. But then we're back to Mima's birthday celebration, which is kind of a mess. You see Connie and Daryl are all into each other. And then there's Billy and Sam walking along and Amber tries to cut in, even though they're not dancing. And tells Sam that she's a Jezebel and needs to back off. Yeah. Which is like kind of hilarious, but still creepy as fuck. Dad Kevin tries to apologize to Billy, but he's like, I suck. Or walks off. So Billy's mom, Grace, is like trying to get her husband to talk to the dad and her and the grandma like try to put them together, but they just insult each other and walk off. I think he said something about, oh, you're looking a little thin up there (laughs) about his hair. And he's well, look at yourself. And then they just walk off from each other. Mima is not feeling this. She like knows everyone hates each other and is just kind of like over it. So Joe decides to give this speech about his mom, Mima, and it's like whore bad. (laughs) So he reads out this thing he wrote and it's like beyond insulting. He spells out mother, but it's like M for the many years you've been on this earth. O for other people your age who are no longer with us. T for time, which you have somehow beaten. And Mima's face is just like so done. She's like, what H the fuck is this? Is for your health, which is a constant amazement to me. E is for energy, which is more than people half your age. And at this point, she gets up and walks out because she's like done. And thank God, because R is for reincarnation. We hope you come back as someone else for another hundred years. He should have just went with the Mr. T mother. There, there is no, no other, other like, like a mother. mother. So, so treat her right. Treat her right. Treat your mother right. 
Mm. Anyway, so then they bring out this big ass cake with there's like a hundred candles on and it keeps blowing out. It's kind of funny and the guy has to keep stopping to relight it. But that's when they kind of realize that Mima blew the building and <laughs> not there anymore. She gone. Girl, she gone. <laughs> So Mima runs off and she sees a hot air balloon and says she always wanted to ride one of these. The man says, sorry, but this one's already been chartered. Mima then whips out a wad of cash out of her purse and is like, will this do? <laughs> and the guy's like, sure, and tells the other group, oh, sorry, you're next. And the instructor tells her to give him a minute while he like unties the anchors. She asks, like, what happens if she pulls on this rope? And he tells her, what happens if you do this? She's like, that's all I need to know. Bye. And she just flies off. The instructor's like, I'm gonna get sued for this! So back at the hall, the entire Dooley family run out because they realize Mima's missing. Mark Jr. walks by the stepsisters on the phone with their mother, and he overhears them talking about how Sam is impersonating one of their cousins at the reunion. Mark Jr. offers his assistance. For a price. He says he'd sell out his own mother for a price. I believe it. We cut to Billy and Sam, who split up looking for Mima. Sam tells Billy that she's really enjoying being a Dooley. Billy shouts for Mima, and then all of a sudden he hears someone say, I heard you. Why does everyone have cream when they want to talk to me? And he's like, what? And she comes down in the hot air balloon and lands behind Billy. He sees her and is shocked that she's in the balloon. She says she had to wait 100 years to have this much fun. You don't have to, so get on in. Billy tells her that everyone's looking for you, Mima, and you need to get back to the banquet. But she's like, hell no. And then she starts flying off, and then he holds onto the side of the balloon, and Mima makes it rise, and he jumps in the back. <laughs> The next day, back at the hotel, Sam is telling Billy's parents that she can't find Billy. They don't know where he is. And the mom's kind of freaking out a bit. At first, she's like, he's a big boy. He can take care of himself. But then like a second later, she's like, I need to call the cops. But then, of course, another Jameson brother shows up and he's like, it's okay because I'm the Jameson detective and he's going to find out what happened to Mima and Billy and bring them back in one piece. So Margaret decides that she's going to go out looking for Mima because she feels really bad. She doesn't want anything to happen to her, even if she doesn't want to live with her. The stepsisters try to talk to Mark Jr., but Margaret is like, get in the car. And Kevin also decides that they're going to go out and look for her, too. So we cut back to Mima and Billy in the balloon. Mima says that was the best night of her life and she can stay up in the air forever. Billy says, me too, but don't you think we should be getting back? Mima says, back to what? A bunch of loud mouth blowhards who only think about themselves? This is what it's all about. Flying high, freeze pelican. Billy says, well, even pelicans have to eat. <laughs> He's starving. Meanwhile's like, well, why didn't you say so? And pulls out a bag and asks, do you like white chocolate or dark chocolate? And Billy just says yes. The Dooleys and the McKennas return to the resort after no luck finding Mima and Billy. So at the resort, the detective comes in and announces that they know where Mima and Billy are. They're up in the air because Mima hijacked the air balloon. Sam asks which way they're going and the detective says due west. So they decide to leave and go after them. So Kevin's like, I'm going to go out and go look for Mima. And his wife's like, I'm going to stay here just in case. And the grandma's all like, you got room for one more? And he's like, yeah, come on in, mom. And then throws Grandpa Joe in the car. She's hoping that they'll chit chat while they're looking for Mima and get over their bullshit. The stepsisters try to grab Sam while nobody's looking because everyone's looking for Mima. But Aunt Kate asks Sam, posing as Bernice, to ride with her. And she's like, yeah, I'd love to. So, like, the stepsisters are foiled again. Meanwhile, back in the balloon, Billy says, breakfast of champions after eating all the chocolate bars. I agree. <laughs> Mima says when she was a kid, she could eat her weight in candy. She says that she would always raid Margaret's freezer for ice cream and they would always blame Mark Jr. Billy says, why didn't you just tell them that it was you? Mima says, why? I like to see that kid squirm. <laughs> and then everyone gets into a big argument. So grandma's a shit disturber. But her. she's like, that's the only way they communicate is if they <laughs> argue. They uh, look down at the people below and Mima says, you see all of those people down there? Every one of them has problems with their families that drives them off the wall. And it's all got so important that they forget what really is important. So that's why you got to eat all the ice cream while you still can sink your teeth into it. Billy says, I think you're trying to tell me something, Mima. And she's like, no, I'm not. If I wanted to say something, I'd say it direct. 
I'd say talk to your father. Like your father should talk to his father and his father should talk to me. But if I talk direct to anybody, do you think they listen to me? No, it's just a lot more fun just stealing their ice cream. (laughs) Meemaw looks down and says, hey, look at that. Billy says, everyone's naked. Meemaw says, it's a nudist colony. Let's buzz them. (laughs) (laughs) So back in the car with the Dooley dads, Joe says to make a right. And Kevin's like, why should we make a right? We don't know where we're going. Joe's like, it's my instinct. And Kevin's like, what if your instinct's wrong? And so they start arguing a little bit about the directions. It becomes revealed that Kevin used to work at his dad's law firm and they split because they had different ideas about... Basically the direction of how they wanted to run things. And so that's why they haven't been talking because he left and apparently some of the clients went with him. Kevin makes the right turn. The stepsisters spot Aunt Kate's car and start to follow them, but Sam sees them trailing them and is like, you know, I have my learner's permit. Is it okay if I can drive? And Aunt Kate's like, sure. So they stop and switch places, which is weird because the sisters stop behind them and like they could have got out and tried to grab her or something. So Sam then starts a high speed chase and like tries to lose them and is like swerving and Aunt Kate's just like laughing like, do they teach this in driver's head? Aren't you like afraid that they're gonna die? There's also a part where like she changes the radio station and like Aunt Kate is all like digging the hip hop music. Finally, they lose the two stepsisters. They almost run into the McKenna's van and then they swerve and they go down the embankment. Yeah. Because they were on the wrong side of the road and they almost hit them like head on. And then smoke comes out your car. (laughs) So back to the balloon. Billy is like, wow, after buzzing the nudist colony. (laughs) Of course he is because he's a teenage boy. He's seeing nakedness. Uh, Mima says in a few years, gravity will take over and their butts will be hitting the floor. (laughs) Billy says, speaking of gravity, I think we have a problem with as the balloon starts to lower. Mima says they're out of gas. The Dooley dads then spot them in the sky, as do the McKenna's and Aunt Kate and Sam. The balloon lands in the nudist colony, and as all the Dooley clan in their cars crash the gate. It's really funny because the security guard is all like, these people have crashed the gate, and they're wearing clothes. <laughs> and so, a long story short, cutscene, and they're all in jail. <laughs> for trespassing on the nudist colony. Mima's having a blast. She's like, let us out of here, you dirty rats. And then she's like, I've always wanted to say that. And she's like (laughs) banging her cup on the bars and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. So they're trying to figure out what they should be doing. Everyone kind of blames Billy. Like he should have talked Mima out of hijacking the balloon and not going along with it. And his dad kind of stands up for him. Like, what was he supposed to do? He's just a kid. Just because people don't do what you want them to do doesn't mean they're wrong. So he kind of stands up for Billy and stands up for himself to his dad. Mima's all like, just kiss and make up. (laughs) Grandpa Joe's like, all right, but no kissing. (laughs) Finally, they get bailed out. And Mima's disappointed because she wanted to make a dramatic escape. She's so disappointed <laughs> because she wanted, like, to pull a jailbreak. She was Tonight, like, there's gonna be a jailbreak. She's like, you should be using your spoons to make a hole. We've got to come together and figure this out. I saw he... Escape from Alcatraz. We can dig with our spoons. And the guard is, like, so over her, too. It's pretty funny. <laughs> He's just like, whatever, lady. It's... So back at the resort, everyone gets out of their cars. Grace tells the McKennas that she expects to be reimbursed for all the bail because with the money she put up she could have bought her own hot air balloon mark senior says fine and that they're leaving kevin says that they're leaving too mimon says where is everyone going no one is leaving until she gets her birthday cake (laughs) so we cut back to the banquet hall where grandpa joe is rereading his mother's speech and everyone is (laughs) bored as fuck mark jr looking shifty sneaks out and meets up with stepsisters the girls are mad because he hasn't delivered sam to them yet he then sees his aunt patricia and the real cousin bernice and he hatches a plan back at the banquet hall they wheel out Mima's cake and she blows out the candles she says the best line ever which is so much for birthday wishes you're all still here (laughs) but then she says as long as you all are i want you to know that this was the best birthday of my life good luck topping it next year (laughs) So everyone's all happy and Mark Jr. comes in and is like, I got a surprise for everyone. It's Aunt Patricia. And they see the girl next to her and they're like, wait, who's that? And it's like, it's Bernice, the real Bernice. And then they're like, well, who the hell is the other girl? And Billy and Sam are gone. 
So Billy tries to tell Sam that she can stay and like, no one's going to care. They already like you. That's not going to change. And Sam's like, no, I know when it's time for me to leave. So Billy's like, just promise to call me and let me know where you're at. So I know you're okay. She kisses him on the cheek and then she leaves and Billy suddenly realizes that he didn't give her his phone number. So he runs after her and Billy sees Sam then being captured by the stepsisters and Aunt Kate sees them and like runs after them and is like, we got to save her. Like she's all invested because like they had a little bond. So she's like, I'm going to go after them, like tell your dad. And so he goes back in. Mima like looks at the Bernice and is like the other one was more fun yeah (laughs) so Billy comes back in and he's like they took her and and so they try to figure out what they can do because he's telling them the whole story about Sam and the stepsisters so the stepsisters bring Sam back to the house and the evil stepmother appears looking all fancy and blonde and bitchy Played by the mom from the Wonder Years. When Sam was kidnapped, she also dropped her backpack, which had a luggage tag, so they knew her address. The Dooleys are talking, and Mark Sr. says they would be putting themselves in a position of liability if they acted in the girl's behalf at this time. And then Grandpa Joe says that Mark's right. They can get into serious trouble if they try to help her. Billy says that he'll go after her himself. Kevin, the dad, says to wait and give them a chance to plan an appropriate action. And then this is when Meemaw gets pissed and says, what's the matter with you stiffs? You think we're only supposed to care for blood relatives? We're living proof of that contradiction. We've been at each other's throats for years. Kevin says that Mima does have a point. When we thought this girl was family, we loved her. Now, just because it turns out that she isn't, we stop. Mark Jr. says, yes, definitely. Kevin says, well, I'm going to help Billy, and if anyone wants to come with us, that's up to you. Grandma Dottie gives Grandpa Joe the look, and he says, I hate it when you look at me like that, and goes along with Mm. Kevin. So back at Sam's house, the stepmother is trying to get Sam to sign a power of attorney paper to make the stepmother her legal guardian. She wants to take Sam's inheritance money and invest it and then send Sam off to some Swiss boarding school so she doesn't have to deal with her. Sam's like, no, I ain't signing shit but then we see aunt kate like bound to a chair so sam reluctantly signs it the stepmother's all happy and they're gonna go ship her off to the airport right now and send her to europe meanwhile in the car with the dooleys grandpa joe says well we've already been arrested once today for trespassing and now we'll have to chance being two-time offenders kevin says what's the worst that can happen we'll lose our bar cards and switch to a life of crime Joe then says, well, at least we'll go back to the family family roots. roots. (laughs) They have a laugh and they arrive at Sam's house. Billy says he's going to climb over the fence and open it from the other side. When the stepmom arrives and says, I have a better plan. Why don't I just open it for you and let you in? And does so. She then offers the family a beverage. Billy says he wants Sam. The stepmother says, oh, you just missed her and opens the front door where we see Aunt Kate and her bonds. The family rushes in to untie her as Kate tells them that they took Sam to the airport and that they need to go get her. The stepmom says that no one is going anywhere. She's Sam's legal guardian. and If anyone tries to interfere, she'll press charges. Kevin says, I hope you do press charges because as of now, he looks at his dad. We're Sam's attorneys. Grandpa Joe says, Dooley and Dooley. <laughs> Kevin tells Kate, Billy, and Grace that they need Sam here to testify, so go stop the plane. They run off. Kevin then says, Dad, we have some legal work to do. He then asks the stepmom if she would like her attorney to be present. She just gives a mean look. I love how no one really gives a fuck that, like, Aunt Kate was, like, tied up. I know, I was just thinking the same thing. So we're cutting to the airport and the stepsisters are dropping Sam off and forcing her to get on the plane. Then Grace and Billy and Aunt Kate show up and approach the girls and it's like, where's Sam? It's like, she's on the plane. And like Grace and Kate are going to like fight these two girls. They're all like putting their duke stuff. One of them pushes Billy and then Grace goes into like mama bear mode. She's like, how dare you touch my son? Then Billy realizes that the plane's left and he is like super broken hearted. So as they're leaving all defeated, guess who shows up? 
it's Sam. And she's like, I'm used to sneaking out of places. It's fine. So they're going to go into Aunt Kate's car. But then she's like, I got my own car. She stole the keys to her sister's convertible. And Aunt Kate's like, I've always wanted to drive one of these things. And she's like, well, have at it. And so they drive off. And then the sisters rush out. And, of course, realize their car is being driven off into the sunset. And they are pissed. Back at the house, the stepmom says, well... As Kevin says, just a minute, as he's going over the documents to look for any, like, loopholes or whatever lawyers do. Joe asks Kevin, what do you think? Kevin says, it looks like she took care of everything. The stepmom says, that's correct, gentlemen. I have the best lawyers that money can buy, which obviously you are not. Kevin says, look, lady, both you and I know that the only way to contest this thing is if Sam's here. Now, only she can tell us if she signed this of her own free will. She says, you're right. And unfortunately, at this very moment, she's 30,000 feet and climbing. So if you're done wasting my time, please allow me to show you the door. Kevin says that they're not giving up. Even if she dotted an I the wrong way, they'll haul her ass into court. The stepmom laughs and then says, please, please, you're scaring me. Good day, gentlemen. But just then, who should arrive but Sam and Aunt Kate? And Sam says, hi, Mom. I just decided leaving the country isn't for me. Billy tells the dads to grab the stepmom as she tries to saunter off away. They catch her and Kevin tells her that she might want to call those attorneys now. The really expensive ones. Then Aunt Kate talks to Sam about what she wants to do. She's like, you shouldn't be living in this big house by yourself. And um, have you thought about what you're going to do now? And she's like, I just want to wish Mima a happy birthday. And she's like, okay, but if you're open to some suggestions, I think we can work something out. So back at the resort, we see Connie and Dylan making plans to call each other constantly because they're like in love. The Jameson at the desk says to the Dooley parents that the kids are getting along really well. Maybe they'll all be one big happy family one day. (laughs) And the parents make like a face like, let's get the fuck out of here. Grace walks over and grabs Connie by the arm and leaves. The family is outside loading up their cars when Mima comes out and asks for everyone's attention. She says that in the 100 years that she's been around, she's seen movies, television, and the facts invented. She's seen people go from horses to cars to planes, but she never thought she'd see the day her family would stop competing with one another. She's like, why you people actually appear to like one another? Now it finally makes sense why the Almighty kept me around so long. But please don't let that stop you from fighting now and then. It's what keeps things interesting see y'all next year (laughs) (laughs) so billy and sam are walking and the weird cousins like keep popping up to them offering them bugs and gross shit and whatever (laughs) else and then the one girl comes and wants a piggyback ride like this instant Kate comes up to Sam and says that she talked to Grandpa Joe and she's requesting to adopt Sam, which they're stoked about. Sam's like, you sure you want to do this? I'm not perfect. She's like, yeah, but you're just the daughter I always wanted. They hug it out. Then Sam and Billy go off to a waterfall and Sam thanks Billy for everything. He's like, I didn't really do anything. It was everyone else. But Sam's like, no, when she lost her dad, she never thanked him for all the things he did for her. So she wants to make sure to thank people who are important to her. And then they make the kissy faces. Billy jokingly says that maybe he does deserve the thanks then. Then she kind of backs off and she's like, now that we're going to be related, should we be doing this? And guess who just happens to show up at that exact moment? creepy cousin amber and she's all like you had a perfectly good cousin right here you didn't have to bring one in from the outside and i'm like girl no she turns to sam and says well may the best cousin win like girl stop you already lost so joe tells kevin as he's packing up the car that that sam's stepmother has been turned into the authorities even her brilliant lawyer is gonna have a tough time explaining how she's been treating sam but we still got a lot of work to do so see you in the office on monday kevin says that he'll be there joe says that he never moved his desk and kevin says that he wish he did because he hated that view (laughs) joe says that something can be worked out they shake hands and then hug Grandma Dottie and Grace smile and they say they're good for getting Kevin and Grandpa Joe to talk to each other once again. Margaret interjects and says, of course you're good. You're duly women. If it wasn't for us, this family would have gone up in smoke years ago. Mima says, are you going to get this show on the road or what? (laughs) 
or are you waiting for me to turn to slush back here? Grace and Kevin get in the car when Mark Sr. and Margaret approach from both sides. They say that they're going to Hawaii for a trip and they were wondering if they could look after Mark Jr. for a bit. Mark Jr. says he doesn't want to go with them. Kevin is like, you've got to be kidding. Mark Sr. says that they kind of figured that they'd say something like that. So let's make it interesting. How about one more challenge? Grace says, don't do it. But Margaret berates him into it. And then we cut to Kevin and Mark Sr. doing free throws. Kevin shoots and it circles the rim. We then cut back to the the duallys driving in the car as Billy narrates about how he couldn't pick his family like Sam did. But even though his family is nutty, he'd still pick them every time. We see Mark Jr. sitting in the car next to him. Billy says, not that it would be so bad if you could trade a relative or two like they do with players in professional sport. He then fantasizes about trading Mark Jr. for a big football player who then sits in for the Dooley family photo. And that's the end of the movie. Thoughts on the movie? You know, watching this back, I still really enjoyed it. Like, Mima gave me so much life with all her sarcastic banter. Yeah, she was the best. It's like people were there to celebrate her, but then they really didn't give a shit about her, which kind of like sucked. Yeah, they just cared about winning their stupid sports competitions. And like showing good face. I still feel like it stands up as like feel good family movie kind of thing. Yeah, there's lots of life lessons like about how when people should communicate with each other and stuff like that. And how sometimes you should just be having fun and not like take life so seriously. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I wanted to tell you, do you know who Mark Jr. was? No. Mark Jr. was played by the kid from A Christmas Story, Ralphie, but grown up. Oh. That's why I was like, oh, he looks familiar, but like, he looked different. He looked very different. Because he was obviously older at this point. Anyways, I just thought that was a fun fact. Again, this special had a lot of classic TV actors and actresses in it, like Joanne Worley from Laughing, and Grandpa Joe was from The Ropers and Three's Company, and Grandma Dodd was in Greece as the like assistant to the principal so it's kind of interesting to see just like a lot of famous faces and I think it's rare to see a tv movie that actually has like a decent storyline yeah it wasn't like g-rated it was a little pg at times too I remember my mom made me watch this like Liam Michelle like Christmas TV special about them being in Hawaii or some shit. And I was, saw some of that. It but was I didn't see just the whole thing. so bad. Some of the dialogue was just like not believable mm. at all. So I like some of the sarcasm of this. There were some cheesy moments too, but I still enjoyed it. And I liked about this, like, kind of like how we talked about with our Salute Your Shorts episode last time, is, like, the teenagers acted like real teenagers. They didn't act, like, super fake. With the well, exception and, of Amber. Yeah, with the exception. <laughs> I guess we can talk more about having crushes on our cousins in the free spaces. <laughs> Just um, kidding. <laughs> no, we can't. Because it didn't happen. <laughs> But nice try at a segue. <laughs> and so let's move on to that brain basement. All right, welcome to the Brain Basement. We're going to talk about family reunions and how much fun they are not. Thank God our family is not super competitive like in this movie because I would be like, we are not doing this shit. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny because I've always been very cynical and I've always felt like I didn't fit in well with the family just because some of our cousins are like older than us and so we're not like the right age group to mesh. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that some of them don't want to deal with the family bullshit, too, which kind of makes me see them in a different light. Yeah. But we're not, like, super close, and so anytime we'd have to get together with the family, it'd be kind of awkward. Well, I'm just awkward anyways in general. I'm very shy, and I'm kind of like the person who doesn't speak unless someone speaks to me, unless I'm feeling particularly ballsy that day. Yeah. So, like, I'm not one to go up and start a conversation with someone, so I just feel kind of awkward. I'm not really either, because I'm into things like anime and K-pop and things that normal people my age aren't into. But I've had some fun times at family functions. Yeah, I don't hate my family or anything, but it's just kind of, again, awkward, or sometimes you just Mm -hmm. feel kind of out of place. And there's always, like, the one person you don't really get along with that well, but what can you do? You can't pick your family, like Billy said. We did have a family reunion once, but that was more for, like, my mom and her cousins. Because we see our family, like, all the time, because everyone lives locally. And that was all right. We didn't do any Olympic events or anything. (laughs) 
thank god but i, I could go for a barbecue that. that's for sure yeah let me some barbecue oh some guy tried to steal the food at that remember yeah we were barbecuing some food and this guy just like came up into our space and thought he could make himself some food and my uncle was like what's going on like are you hungry like what's happening he did not look homeless or anything. Yeah, no. But, and, you know, you never know someone's situation. But, well, you but could you have just ask. asked. Yeah. They would have probably given it to you. It's not like there would have been, like, no fuck off or anything. Right. It was hella random. Yeah. Ready to listen to some tunes? Let's do it. All right, we'll see you in the music spotlight. Welcome to the Music Spotlight, where today's topic is family songs. These are songs that are by family member groups. And first on the list is one of Snarky's favorites. Or not. (laughs) That she loves to sing all the time. Or not. She's lying. She loves it. It's gonna be a secret no one knows, a.k.a. an oombop by Hanson. Oombop, doobadop, ba doop I swear I don't yeah, know the words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know you love this song. I mean. It's your guilty pleasure. I don't love it, it, but it's just, it doesn't make sense. And it's an earworm that gets stuck in your head because it's a secret no one knows, like an oombop. Uh-oh. Or I like to, you know, talk about the hail bop comment. And you go, hail bop do ba <laughs> In the hail bop you gone. In the hail bop you not there. there. I mean, true story. In the hail bop you wearing Nikes. In the hail bop you did. I don't know. <laughs> I think I saw something on hail bop that was on TV. Like I was weeks watching ago. it. Oh. Yeah, it was about all about the Heaven's Gate lyric. It was really dark. Moving on to some happier things with number two. Which is Snarky's actual favorite song. Love I do them. love this song. This is not <laughs> even a joke. Is the Pointer Sisters' Dare Me. Baby, make your move. Step across the line. Touch me one more time. Come, Come on, on, dare me. me. I love this song. Because you got a chip on your shoulder. So knock it off. It has your name on it. I will knock it off. <laughs> That's like my favorite part. Yeah, this song's a jam. One of them, the Pointer Sisters just died like a couple months ago, so R.I.P. She's hey. a sister and we'll miss her. Yeah. Moving along to number three for another family act. It's the Bee Gees, and we picked my favorite Bee Gees song, which is How Deep Is Your Love? Be- How deep is your love? How deep is your love? I really, I really need, need to love, cause we're living in a world of Ooh, that's really high. (laughs) (laughs) I was not breaking that down. And maybe I should have let it be. From the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. How Deep Is Your Love is the jam. It is. Number four is another sister act. Sister Sledge with We Are Family. I got all my sisters with me. Hey, 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 hey. I got my sister with me. I can't get rid of her. Rude. <laughs> Just kidding. This is a good disco classic. And number five is one of my favorites. I'm laughing just thinking about it. Yeah, because it's not my favorite. Because <laughs> <laughs> me and our friends sing it at karaoke every time we go. It's Bross from the UK with When Will I Be Famous? When will I, will I be famous? I can't answer. I can't answer that. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love bras because they crack me up. They have this like weird inflection when they sing where they're like, I owe you nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Like they always like break it up when they sing and it's hilarious. And they came out with a documentary. It came out in 2018 that I watched earlier this year. It's on Tubi if you want to watch it for free. It's called After the Screaming Stops, and it kind of talks about how the brothers reunited after being apart for, like, a really long time and did a reunion tour, which we were going to do songs of the reunion tours, but we didn't. (laughs) We chose family songs instead. Speaking of reunions, we're going to go on to our honorable mention, which, of course, is Peaches and Herb. Reunited and it feels so good. Reunited cause we've understood There's one perfect kiss and honey This one is it We both feel so excited cause we're reunited, reunited again. again 
even though peaches and herb aren't related, <laughs> we decided to throw this one on anyways for shits and giggles mm. because family reunion. And yeah, this is a jam. So yeah, that's it for our music spotlight. If you want to check out the songs in full, you can check them out on our website. So thank you for reuniting with us for our family reunion special. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great Labor Day weekend and get some R&R. Some barbecue, maybe. I want some barbecue. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> and we'll meet up again with you in two weeks for our very special Pokemon episode. Which I know you're looking forward to because you're the very best. Like no one ever was. The to catch the them is my real test. To claim them is my cause. I don't even know that's right, but we're going to tell the very funny story of how I met the guy who sings the theme song. And you will be amazed. So... <laughs> or horrified. <laughs> one of the two. We'll see you. Have a great Labor Day weekend. And if you would like to drop us a line, you can email us at spunkyandsnarkyshow at gmail.com. You can go to our website, which is spunkyandsnarkyshow.wordpress.com. Or you can leave us a voice message on our Anchor page, which is anchor.fm slash spunkyandsnarkyshow. Thanks again. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.